Okay, ready or not, here we go. We're up to optimization now. That's one of the main topics that your business people want you to understand. So here we go. Of course, you'll have to do with calculus. That's no surprise. Sorry, I hit the space bar a little bit hard on that one. We're going to spend this section on just solving real-life optimization problems. Not too many, just to give you an idea of how you can do it. And here's optimization. That's not too funny, but anyway, let's go. So let's take this example. You've got a picture of a box way better than any picture I could draw. It's an open box. So notice that if you were painting this, you'd have to paint the bottom and the four sides. And of course, you don't paint the top. It's open. It might seem like a no-brainer, but you have to take account of that when you're working this. So, surface area, the amount of material you have to work with is 108 square inches. Notice that area, square inches. What dimensions will produce a box with a maximum volume? So, you're not sure what's going to go in it. You're going to decide later, perhaps, but you want to hold as much as possible with that 108 square inches. So here's our start. The surface area of the box is the area of the base. And since the base, look back here again, the base is x by x. It's a square base. So the area of the base is x squared. And four sides. Each of the sides is x times h. If we slip back here, here's one of the sides, x by h. So the area is xh. And we've got four of those. So 4xh for the sides. That's our secondary equation. Remember, what we're interested in is maximizing the, the, the volume of it, the quantity that can be put in it. So this is secondary equation. We need that though. That's all part of the deal. So if V is to be optimized, we have to express it as a function. And we need to somehow get into one variable too. So what we need is to take that secondary equation, 108 equals x squared plus 4xh, and solve that for h so that we can put the h into the primary equation and the h's will be gone. So here's our volume equation, length times width times height. We just found out another way of expressing the height. It's 108 minus x squared or 4x. So we'll take the h out and we'll put that in the x squared h and now it looks like this and if we multiply by the x squared we end up with 27x minus 1 fourth x cubed and immediately you might say to yourself hey i like this no square roots nothing in the denominator this is really good so, let's go to it. So we want to find out what x gives us the most volume possible while sticking with that surface area of 108 square inches. So, think, if you think about it a little bit, you realize that x has to be less than or equal to 108, the square root of 108, and it has to be greater than zero. You can't have a side that has a negative length. I've taken a bunch of math, but I've never heard of something that involved negative sides. I'm still waiting for that one. There's our domain. The x's have to come between zero and about ten point something. Maybe ten and a half, somewhere in, in that vicinity. So what you want to find out is 
the techniques using from the first three sections of the chapter, you can find out that this has an absolute maximum at six inches for the bottom square dimensions and three inches for the height. So how do you do that? First of all, find all the given quantities, what do you already have? And what are the quantities you don't know yet? And if possible, draw a picture. Second, write a primary equation. The one we just saw was talking about the volume, so that will give you your primary equation. And anything that involves your particular problem or challenge, let's call it, you might need to write down because that would be part of your secondary equation if it exists for your particular example. You're going to reduce the primary equation to one variable by solving the secondary equation for the variable that you don't want to use. Figure out what the domain is that makes sense for your particular problem and then find out the maximum value using the calculus techniques we've already talked about. So what we've got here, this is a little bit different. You could have worked out the other one, and I'll leave that for you to play with. You know what the answer is, you know what the question is. Try it. So let's see. I've got a little bit of a typo going on here. I'll have to clean that up a little bit later on slide 14. So first of all, you have a rectangular page, maybe some kind of a poster. You've got 24 square inches of print. That's how much paper you've got. The margins at the top and the bottom are one and a half inches wide. The margins on each side are one inch wide. This begs for a sketch, a simple sketch. Draw that piece of paper as a rectangle. Put the one and a half inches at the top and at the bottom. One inch on the right, one inch on the left. What dimensions should the page have to minimize the amount of paper used? Remember, this is how much print you're going to have. Not how big the page is, it's how big the print is. So this is what we're talking about. Inside here is that 24 square inches of print. We're going to get a piece of paper that has one inch on left and right, an inch and a half on the top and the bottom. Here's our page. Oops, because I got a little bit carried away. So what are the dimensions of the page itself that you're going to get from the office supply store, for example? Okay, so first of all, what's the width? The width is y plus the margins. Each margin is 1, so the width will be y plus 2. There's your y plus 2 down there because we're going to calculate the area. For the height, you've got x inches plus an inch and a half on the top, another inch and a half on the bottom, in other words, three inches total, in addition to the x, so you've got x plus three is the height of the actual piece of paper. So the area of the piece of paper is a, and it's the height times the width. There's your formula for the area, length times width. The printed area inside the margins is given by x times y. That's the inside. If you want to take a look back here, the printed area inside is x by y, area x times y, and that's going to be 24 square inches is what you have to print whatever your message is. Solve that one for y because you want 
everything in x's. So when you write out this equation for the area, you'll be able to take out the y, replace this y with 24 over x, which you got from your secondary equation. So there's our primary equation. <coughs> okay. I'm not sure what this L is going here. Shouldn't be there. That should be a typo. So a typo on slide 17. So x plus 3 times y plus 2. Let's see, we'll get the pan here. So we don't want that there. That was a typo. That's my mistake. Is your secondary equation. And your secondary equation is that. And you're going to take this y. And where you see a y up here, you're going to put in the 24 over x. So that gives you a equals x plus 3. That's okay because it's only an x. And over here, the y value is replaced by 24 over x, which equals y. So it's really y plus 2, just in a different form. And there's our area. The area of the piece of paper itself, with the margins, is x plus 3 times 24 over x plus 2. Rewrite the second one as a single fraction. Now, I hope that doesn't confuse you, but the basic thing is this. You need to rewrite this, too, because you need a common denominator of x. To do that, you take this 2 and multiply it by x over x, which is just a 1. You'll do that inside here. So you have 2x over x. You can add the 2 together. 24 on the top of the first one. 2x on the top of the second one and you've rewritten that second factor. Next, you multiply that out. So the x times this fraction, and then 3 times this fraction, and you end up with this. I'll leave you to do some of the details. If you have a question on that, Check with me. I'm going to leave that to you, though. Simplify that. And that looks pretty good, right? 72 over x, maybe not so much, but still not too bad. x has to be positive, so there's our domain. We can't have a box that has a negative number for the length of the base, so x greater than 0, can't even have 0 either, because that wouldn't be a box. To find the minimum area, first you'll find the critical numbers, so first you take the derivative of a, and it gives you dA dx, so we're differentiating with respect to x, don't forget the chain rule just in case you need it, Again, leave it to you a little practice for some of you who haven't been doing enough practice on these. Make sure you get 2 minus 72 of x squared. If you got 2 minus 72 x to the negative 2, notice that that's the same thing as what we've got over here. Set the derivative equal to 0 to get the critical points. So you just throw the 0 in for dA dx. Subtract 2 from each side, just basic algebra. Multiply by x squared. And take the square root of both sides. You've got two critical numbers. But remember, the domain of x was positive numbers. That means the negative part, throw it away. 
Here's our trash can. Throw it in the trash can. X is your, is your number. It's your critical number. So by the first derivative test, that's going to be a minimum when x equals 6. So the dimensions of the page would be, remember, x plus 3 was one dimension, y plus 2 is the other dimension, and this was our y. So just put the 6 in where the x was. 6 here. 6 here. Oh, right there. And you're going to have a piece of paper that's 9 by 6. So when you call the office supply people or the paper supply people, tell them you want a number of pages and each of them needs to be 6 by 9. Some of them get more complicated. But that's the basic idea. What you might want to do even is to take a look back at what we've talked about and just go over that yourself, trying it after you've seen me do it. See if you can replicate that because you're going to need to do similar ones that you don't know the answer for, but you need to get the system down. Remember, the goal is to use the power of calculus. And that's with some things that at first glance seem like, I can't do this! Well, here's one case where you're wrong, because you can do it. There's a picture of our equation, and you can see what's happening. It does have, where's my cursor? There we go. The cursor is here. So, because of how this is set up, you have a top value, maximum value for the area, a minimum value for for uh, what you were working on. For the area. Minimum area because you're going to pay for the amount of paper that you use. Maximum for the volume because you want to get as much on the page as possible. And that's it for optimization. Have fun. If you run into a problem, you know how to get a hold of me. Email sailorod at wofford.edu or sailormath at outlook.com. You can either ask me a question about a particular problem or exercise, or you can ask to get together via Zoom and talk about things in general or a specific example. With that, I'll let you go, and I'll say keep smiling. See you next time. Bye-bye.